Hey guys, so in this video we are going to be talking about how to calculate a dihybrid cross. So dihybrid means that we are dealing with two genes or traits instead of one like a monohybrid cross. By the end of this video, you should be able to do all of these things. These are also the steps of calculating a dihybrid cross. Okay, now I made this very fancy, nice little graphic organizer to tell you, um, basically to guide you how to do this. If you are completing a dihybrid cross, like obviously I'm not going to provide you this graphic organizer every time, but you have this here for the steps. Alright, so first, I always read my problem. So a tall green pea plant that is heterozygous for both traits is crossed with a short yellow pea plant that is homozygous recessive for both traits. Show the test cross. Okay, now a tall green pea plant. So I always wanted to determine the genotypes of um, my parents first. So that's going to be step two. So it actually gives me my genotypes for each parent. So, and it told me tall green pea plant that is heterozygous, so I know that I'm gonna have one capital, one lowercase for each of these traits. Notice that there are four letters, not two, because I have two letters per one gene. Dihybrid talks about two genes. Okay, I'm gonna show you two different methods to determine all of the combinations that all of these alleles could combine in meiosis that would then determine how they would combine during fertilization. Okay, so the first way that I can determine all of my different combination by determining, this is I'm determining my gametes essentially, is by a, just completing a mini Punnett square. So I'm gonna put one gene on the, chop, on the top and then one gene on the side. So this is going to be parent one. And then I just complete it like a multiplication table. Okay, so parent one, I have four possible combinations, and these are actually gametes. So this is what would end up, oh, you can't see what I'm writing. This would end up in like each little gamete, so either an egg or a sperm, depending if you're male or female. For parent two, I'm going to put one gene on the top, one gene on the side, and complete like a little multiplication table. So each of my four possible gametes is going to be the same thing in this case. That was one method, okay? One method. If you like this method, go with it, have fun. If you hate that method, good, because I have another one. Okay, parent one is heterozygous. So I'm going to do the FOIL method. If you've taken algebra, you know what I'm talking about. All right, F is for first. So I'm going to take capital T, capital G, because they're the first, um, they're the first of each G. Outside, so those are my two outside letters. That's T, capital T, and lowercase g. My inside is lowercase g and big G. And my last is little t and little g. Parent two is little t, little t, little g, little g, or homozygous recessive all across. If I FOIL it, I'm going to use the same exact method. First, outside, inside, last. All right, parent one. I had these results for all of my gametes, and then for parent two, I had this result for all of my possible gametes, and look at that. These are the exact same thing. I have all the same ones, <coughs> excuse me, for each of my methods. So just pick the one that you like and go with that. If this made no sense to you, disregard it, forget that I ever told you anything. Okay. Now I get to fill in my Punnett square. So I'm going to put each of these gametes. Notice that my Punnett square is now 16 boxes and not 4. This is like mega Punnett square. So 
So I'm going to put my parent one on top. I'm going to put all of its gametes on the top. Notice now that I have two letters above each box, not one, because I now am dealing with two genes, not just one. Okay, so when I fill in this box, I like to group my genes together, which means I'm going to write, for my case, I'm just going to write all the T's first and then all the G's second. So I see capital T, lowercase t, capital G, lowercase g. Here, I see two lowercase g's, or T's, one capital G, one lowercase g. I'm literally just filling it in like a multiplication table. But every inner box should have four letters. Alright, I want you to try to fill in the rest so you can pause the video. So pause the video, try to fill in the rest, and then come back. Okay. Welcome back. Alright, so this was my filled in Punnett square. What I need to do now is determine, right? what are all of my phenotypes okay so i had tall and green now notice in my problem it told me tall and green was heterozygous that means the tall was dominant and the green was dominant in order for something to show if it's dominant i only need one capital letter so if i look in my completed punnett square i'm sorry i'm just i already did this one so hopefully you filled in that one okay so when I'm looking at all of my genotypes, I need to make sure that in order for it to be tall and green, it has at least one capital T and one capital G. So the only one that I see that are these four boxes here. So that's one, two, three, four. There are 16 boxes total. That's four out of 16. That's going to be 25%. All right, now I want to find something that is tall and yellow. Tall I know is dominant, so I only need to see one letter. However, yellow over here was homozygous recessive. I need two little letters in order to see that. So I would need to see in my genotype one capital T and two lowercase g's. When I go to my Punnett square, I see only four boxes have one capital T and two lowercase g's. That's four out of 16, that's 25%. Now I need to find something that's short in green and short in yellow. I want you to try to do this on your own, so pause the video. Welcome back. So short and green. I'm going to show you this. These were the genotypes I should have been looking for. And then these are my resulting percentages of each. So this is your guide of how to complete a dihybrid cross. It seems very confusing, but after a while it becomes very normal. Okay, so you have a couple practice problems on the next page, so get started and have fun.